on the brink, the show that dives headfirst into exploring global events that are pushing people to their limits and driving them to the brink of change. I'm your host, Christy, and I'm here with my amazing co-host, Melissa. Today, we have an extraordinary guest lined up for you, none other than the incredible Alan Staple from the Staple Crew channel. Now, before we kick off things, let's hear from all of you awesome viewers out there. If you're tuning in on YouTube or Rumble, show us some love with a thumbs up or a rumble. And to our incredible radio listeners, don't worry, we've got you covered too. You can catch up on all of our previous episodes by visiting our website at vitabroadcastnetwork.com. That's vitabroadcastnetwork.com or on your favorite podcast platform. Just search for us by using the handle at Vita Broadcast. Oh boy, are we pumped to have Alan on the show today? I bet many of you have already witnessed his incredible work. And I'm sorry, I just cut you off because I'm on a roll here. But <laughs> it's exciting. A, it is. As a social media influencer and co-host of The Staple Crew, alongside his son, Brent Staple, Alan has become a household name. But here's the exciting part. Alan's life has been a thrilling adventure filled with remarkable experiences. He's been a yacht captain, a ski instructor, a fly fishing guide, an investor, and even a farmer just to scratch the surface. Not only that, is deeply passionate about the world of cryptocurrency and he genuinely or genuinely shares his invaluable insights and insider information with the masses. He's extremely generous. He his really message is. about all of, uh, is all about embracing hope and utilizing our critical thinking skills to navigate through these turbulent times we find ourselves in. So be prepared to be inspired. Alan, we are beyond thrilled to have you join us today on the show. Welcome to Beyond the Break. Welcome, Alan. We're so happy to have you here. Well, we're so excited that you're here. And I have to say, you know, knowing what I know about you, like, obviously, I've met you once, but it was very brief. And then yeah. going through all, you know, watching all your videos, I mean, you are a well-rounded person. You, you are just a wealth of information. And so it's like, wow, what, what am I going to talk to Alan about? Like, you know, there's, so, there's so many things that so many different directions. Um, and the reason when I, um, you know, with us creating Vita Broadcast Network, um, I think I, I kind of told you a little bit about, you know, us wanting to have like a collection of of information and shows that are kind of of supporting, you know, the spreading of knowledge, self sovereignty, um, food intelligence. We right. want we want this to be about for the people, by the people, for the people, sharing of information. And I mean, you're you obviously you you fit well into that, and you have a lot of information. We also, you know, we we're Bitcoin. Um, I like XRP. Um, you know, and we and we really, if you've watched any of our shows, um, we've done you know the topics on the Operation Choke Point um, and and others. You know, the Black mm -hmm. Rock and all. All of that sure. and kind of diving yeah. into that. And so that one video that I sent that you had done, I'm like that kind of that touches it kind of it, it goes with some of the, the material that we've covered, um, you know, yeah. in the past. and um, but then, of course, you being you and your your partner <laughs> and captain and you know, uh, and living off grid semi mostly, um, mostly. And all that. That's where, you know, so we thought we would, we'd kind of touch on that stuff uh, first and then sure. uh, get into the crypto and the latter in the latter half. Um, well, and first of all, other... thank, thank you so much for the compliments. And uh, it's been a real uh, effort. My wife and I, you can't do this alone, you know, um, right. it, we all kind of go down those I don't even like the term conspiracy theory. It's more life experience to me. Is that's that's what I call it. And you can't do that without a partner that doesn't have the same page. You know, if you're right. not on the same page, it's like, well, you know, one turns into a prepper and goes all paranoid and digs a hole in a basement and fills it full of food, and the other one's <laughs> like, you're ridiculous. <laughs> so uh, it's been a family family uh, gathering really for 
the three of us. My son is, uh, he's a li- little less conspiratorial than we are, maybe, but uh, he's still he's young. Very, yeah, he's still young, but yeah. he's listened to all my stories and that for his whole life. Sure. And now they're like, he'll call me up and go, Dad, they're all like coming true. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. I, how old yeah. is your son? He's 38. Okay. I, That's- I believe. <laughs> my daughter is 38 as well. And uh-huh. it's it's uh, kind of the same thing is that because she's a new mom, she's starting to have a different view of the world than what she had prior to that. Sure. And much more, uh, I'm not going to say conservative, but more aware because she's now got a little one to look after. Yes. Yeah. And and I'm just going, oh, welcome home, hon. Welcome <laughs> home. <laughs> we, we've missed you. But, yes, uh, we have. Yeah, she'll be back. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's it's very uh it it's really neat because in so many ways we're we're all coming back to our roots and our and who we are as people and a and a nation, I hope. And Gosh, um, me too. But for me, it's it, it you can stray for a long time. And really get wild and crazy and woke or whatever they are these days. But eventually you do come back to, hey, you know what? I just want security, good food, water, shelter, friends, and family. And I think we all really want all those same things. So it's pretty, everybody kind of does that wild 20s or whatever they do. And they all kind of come back. Seems like, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, most certainly did. (laughs) I'm really just happy to see so many young people kind of getting back to the roots. And actually, you know, there there is that push where they're, you know, they're calling so and so boomers and, you know, the young, the millennials. And and I just always think that that is the push to divide. They use those words. They put those labels on it to intentionally keep us separated from one another. But I've really noticed that you know, there's a lot of folks, a lot of, a lot of younger people, they're getting in there. And that's one thing I can say about the crypto space is that you have older and younger folks and they're all learning and working together. And I just absolutely love that about this space. And then when you start start learning about money, it does take you down that rabbit hole. And then you're like, well, wait a minute, they've been messing with our food and they're messing with our water and they're doing And so the next thing you know, you got chickens in your backyard, you know? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, yes. you do. Isn't that the truth? And they and they multiply quickly. Yes, so indeed. It's fun. Yeah, it's it's you know everything you just said is just is so uh, we're all experiencing it, and yeah. it's it's funny how my parents went through the same thing. Oh yeah, and uh, they were kind of crazy and partiers when they were younger and whatnot, and then uh, as they got older, they became so conservative, and I thought, you know. I don't even really know who my mom is anymore, you know? Yeah. But now it all kind of makes sense, but yeah, yeah, it's fun. It's all good. Yeah. There was a lot to learn from them. Whatever you're into. Exactly. Yeah. We're, we're really having a hard time with, uh, politically right now because I'm not a political person at all. and never have been the last I'm, I don't even like to talk about that because people get offended either way, whether you do or you don't. Yeah. And so anyway, but like it's been so in our face the last, I don't know, two or three campaigns, yeah. if you will, presidential elections. And uh, I've just really it's been so nice not having to hear much about it lately. And now the drum is beating again and it seems louder than ever before. Um, so. It's going to be interesting to go through it all, but I really like my little ranch up in the mountains and just <laughs> do my thing. And it, yeah. it reminds me of why you work so hard your whole life long and you do the things the best you can and you uh, produce a life for yourself to where you have options and you're not. I can't imagine being some young couple really struggling to try and make ends meet and they're, you know, in downtown Los Angeles or wherever i i just can't even imagine how they go through that right now but we all did in different times so for it's all of us it's a different life experience but it seems like crazier times than ever 
that That's way. such a good point because I, when you were referring to your folks, you know, any yeah. person, any person from a previous generation is looking at current times and going, Oh, I don't know. Things have gotten so out of hand here. I, I just, <laughs> it's not the way it used to be. Yeah. And here we're looking, this is normal. But this is this is right. the thing, though. I think the I think the envelope has been pushed a little farther than they it's ever have been pushed before, though. Yeah, a little bit. That goalpost keeps tiny. getting moved too much into where it we're does, into yeah. that crazy zone right now. Yeah, but so it's time one of the to dial it back. I, one of the things I find interesting uh, about myself, if I can, uh, is I really. I'm not the old guy, get off my lawn guy. I have never been that guy. It's not, I work with young people my whole life. And uh, the most entertaining people, I think personally are young people mm -hmm. and truly the younger, the better. Um, and we could get into that religiously or philosophically or however you'd like to. But for me, my experience with them is that they're less, uh, they're carrying less luggage they have less rules they're less manipulated they they seem a little more open to uh learning and they seem a lot better about um seeing more recently from maybe the other side of the veil if you will um but they're also very uh open and everything's new to them and they really want to explore and get it out of the way and then when they do get older they have a better balance yeah. of life to reflect upon and I, I, I really, I'm not the guy at all who thinks, oh, my generation's the best generation. I really believe that my generation is holding so much of the world back right now. Oh, uh, completely agree. Yeah. We, we really need to do a better job of getting out of the way. I mean, these politicians can't even stand up. <laughs> so, I know. That's got to tell yeah. you that they're a little outdated, doesn't it? Yes, yeah. indeed. Yeah. And uh, maybe they've got, they have so much on the line. That's why they can't leave. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. There's that too. Right? Yeah. Too much to protect. Alan, yeah. I know that you were a yacht captain. We have a great friend who was a yacht captain as well. And I was mm -hmm. wondering if this is kind of where you started off in your career, because it seems you two have some similar stories in terms of being around high level people mm -hmm. because they people are wealthy people go out on yachts. They want to be around yeah. uh, away from others, but they want to be among friends and feel safe with each other to speak. And uh, when you're coming, when you were commanding a ship, you are there, you hear things, but you're not, necessarily part of their conversation, even though you are in some sort of a way. And uh, mm -hmm. I'd like to learn more a little bit, learn a little bit about how you became a yacht captain and how you went down this, this trail that you've, this okay. remarkable I, path that you've taken. Yeah. It's, it's incredible. First of all, I, I, I need to clarify something you just said, because okay. I, Every boat is different and every boss has been different um, in a manner in which I, I personally am family members. I'm still the yacht captain. Um, okay. I'm, they're a family almost to me. I've been with them over a decade. Wow. And I've been blessed in, in the sense that, you know, if, if you're a pretty sharp guy and you can keep up the conversation and you can keep a secret, They'll tell you anything mm. because you live and work on this vessel. And I know a hundred or 200 sure. feet foot long seems like a big boat, but it's not. And no. the other thing that you realize is that they don't really want to talk to their friends and family that much. <laughs> <laughs> their, their wife doesn't want to hear their stories anymore. If you know what I'm saying? So they right. want to tell the story to somebody new with a scotch and a cigar and Next thing you know, you become very, very close um, to these people. So in some sense, if, if you're a charter captain, which is they fly in for a week or two weeks and they fly away, that's a different program okay. than uh, uh, somebody that um, 
I, I know yacht captains that are in the will of families. So you, mm-hmm. you can be, uh, you, there's like everything in life, you can be any level of all of those things. Um, well, you're kind of a, if you, if you think about it, you're, you're kind of like a safe person in a way because yes. you're, you're in their life, uh, consistently, mm-hmm. but maybe not necessarily so close, um, that, I don't know. It's just, it, I, I could see where you would be, you'd be in it, but you're not, it, you know, it's like an arm's length type thing. And, yeah. and then also getting someone's perspective that is not living your day-to-day life and having that yeah. safe person to talk to, I could see that as being incredibly valuable. Yeah. I mean, just to your average, per, I mean, even me, I'm not, a, I'm not rich or anything like that, but <laughs> if no. I had somebody to bounce some ideas off of and listen to some of my uh, stories and whatever, and get uh, their feedback, I would, uh, I would appreciate that extremely, you know, it's, it, it's so, um, <clears throat> it's so difficult for most people uh, to understand who these people are because, um, I think Melissa, you and I talked about this already, but um, most people <clears throat> who don't have a lot of money, which is all of us, <laughs> they they don't really understand that the wealthy really are just people, <laughs> and they have all the same problems that you do, except for one, and that's money. And right. the the problems in which they have are ten times larger than your problems. Yeah. I, I know you think. Paying your electric bill is a big problem, but, and it is, if you don't have any money, that's a big problem. But these people are putting out fires all day long and their life is complicated and it's a mess and uh, their kids are a mess sometimes, most of the time, and their family members are always trying to borrow money. Yeah, it's just, you know, they have a lot of problems. It's not a perfect life. They have to yeah. live on 10 all the time, all right? The time. I yeah. mean, I, I, I worked at a country club, uh, yeah. and the folks that have, and I saw, I know, I know what you're talking about and, and it is kind of yeah. sad too. I mean, they'd be sitting in my office talking to me and I'm like, why are you talking to me? You know? Yeah. I, I, yeah. Mean, just, I mean, they'd bring me a coffee and just talk to me because That's I was right. silly and yeah. whatever. And I'm like, why is this rich person talking to me? You know, <laughs> That's why. But I become their. It's amazing. I, I've just been fortunate, I guess. You know, I've worked for some of the most incredible people. Just <clears throat> giant heart. Now, don't get me wrong. I've worked for a couple of bosses that you know, within a couple of months, it was just I didn't look at them. This just isn't working out. I, I I'm leaving. Well, you you know, I was at a job interview one time at uh, for a job that I was put forward to. That was pretty pretty cool um this is a very famous guy that like everybody would know who he is and uh he and i were having a, he was interviewing me for a job and on the back of his boat and uh i was 20 minutes into this conversation i was just looking at him like yeah we're done here and he's like <laughs> no no i don't i don't understand what, what do you mean no no uh, we we're just getting somewhere i said we, we've been talking for 20 minutes we haven't agreed on one thing not one single thing. I just, right. you know, this is going to be way too close of, for us to be this far apart this early. You know, now I, I've got to go. He was so insulted. You don't walk out on me. And he called the person, the broker, to put me forward for the job and try to get me blackballed yeah. out of the business and everything. And it, it, that just told me I had made the right decision. It Obviously, certainly I did. Yeah. <laughs> just the yeah. way you were describing that person. It's like, gosh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> he was, uh, whew, yep. yeah, you know, can you, you imagine do- being on the ship with them? No, and spending, uh, gosh, it would be very demanding. It'd probably be something. And it was really, I, I don't know how much of a family show we have here, but it was mostly it's family, really, it's just, everyone, <laughs> yeah, um, very sexually explicit wow. stuff, you know what I mean? Like, what he yeah. plans to do on the boat type stuff, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, like, you're like, I'm out. right, right out of the bat. And I was like, no, we're not, uh, that's yeah. not what I'm, that's not what I'm all about. You know, you got the wrong guy. So, yeah. yeah. So do you ever have on, concern? Oh, I'm sorry. sorry Melissa. I, say, I, I, I just heard that. I have to say something <laughs> because <laughs> yeah. 
that yeah. has been a very hot topic is uh oh, is yeah. is uh that type of behavior and how it's crossing over into absolutely taboo areas and has been i'm not going to say it's just yes. doing it the taboo taboo areas like our children yes other people's and, children you bet yes. and that is and, uh, not okay right and there's a lot I never saw any of it, thankfully. Yeah. Um, but you know, um, again, I that's I a hot button right there. <laughs> yeah, it really is. I I knew people that did uh, other. Once you're in the industry, you know all the other captains, you know all the other crew, sure. and and you know there was people that. Well, they have black hoods in their closet. Let's just put it that way. Mm-hmm. You know, that's not uncommon. And uh, for some of these people, so and they have their little ceremonies and stuff, and and it's a right. place that they think they can get away from everybody and nobody will know about it type stuff. So it's it happens a lot on boats, that kind of yeah. stuff. They yeah. do the ceremony type things on boats. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You, you don't do want to believe this stuff is true, but man, yeah. they're it's, well, it's yeah. coming out. It's we're hearing yeah. so much about it now that the the yeah. lifestyles of the other people out there sure. that that uh, yeah. like you're talking but that's, about. I I've even experienced. I haven't experienced it, but I know people that have even in pretty low level banking communities mm-hmm. trying to get to the next level of banking community. So it's not just uh, you know the top. By the way. Uh- so you're saying like the the lower level guys that might like guys or gals or whatever that um that are trying to get to a higher position, then they're invited on a boat or whatever. And they're like, holy smokes, I didn't sign up for this. Well, not even on a boat. I, I was I can't remember who I was talking with about this, but he was telling me about uh, he went to like a banking convention and it was before this before the guy got on the podium. They all did this like ceremony thing in the back room, like behind the curtain. Mm-hmm. And uh, he said it was creepy, flat out creepy. He didn't really, he wasn't, he didn't know much about what was going on. And he was explaining the story very innocently enough to me. And I was like, yeah, I know what's going on there. You haven't figured that out? And he's like, well, it's kind of weird, you know. And it was bankers from all over had gotten to this meeting. So, you know, that Why is that it the bankers? Boat. Why are we hearing so much about <laughs> the the uh the the uber wealthy the wealthy the uber wealthy yeah. and that's a just whole different world of, of behavior is. and uh, there's no boundaries yeah. and a total disregard <clears throat> for human beings it yeah in some uh, cases yeah. yes in some cases but it doesn't have to be a big group of people just enough of them to to know that that's that's yeah. kind of it's evil and no, that's, that's right. Yeah, you're truly right is. among us. Yeah, but I will say that you know I probably worked for I don't know. I swear I was going to count them out one day. Uh, 15, 20 different families, something wow. like that, in thirty mm-hmm. years. Yeah. So, and I want to say that maybe other than a couple, two, three, uh, that I would say that. They had no interest in any of those kind of things. And I would have known if they did. Well, because you interviewed them, right? Just as yeah. they were interviewing well, you and you said no dice. On, yeah. Well, right? see, that's, so that's the thing. Probably in, the, why. in the beginning, it's sort of like, uh, and maybe this isn't a great analogy, but, you know, you want to become a famous actor, right? So you'll take all those really bad roles in the beginning. Well, <clears throat> that's kind of what yachting's like. It's It's a really tough job to get into um so it is. Uh, when you start out you know you kind of take anything because you're at a bottom level you're not the captain you're not making decisions so you 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 end up working for crazier people in the beginning i, I did anyway and then i developed the reputation reputation of being uh, a sought after captain because of many different reasons but you know not just that but um more because my background was so clean that they really look for that the good families look for that you know they want they want clean people because in the world we live in today you can imagine a, like say who elon musk had a yacht okay 
He doesn't, I don't think. But if he did, right, you don't want your crew, if he gets drunk one night with a bunch of friends and says some crazy stuff, it could be all over the social media the following day. Okay. It would be all over there. Okay. So many of these boats today, like you can't, there's like rooms where phones you can't, they won't work. Right. And you have to leave your phones at the door and those kind of things. So um, it's a different world and it, and it's, it's getting crazier in that sense, but they're, uh, they're also protecting themselves a lot different than they used to. So in a lot of ways, I think if we could kind of conclude that thought. I think they're really making grave mistakes today more than they've ever made before. And I think they're being exposed and I think it's really gotten sloppy. They used to be so secret and do a lot of crazy things. And now it just seems to me, maybe because of social media and other reasons that they they've just, they're being um, exposed, if you will, for the real frauds of, you know, the running of the world and the governments that they are because they don't care about us anymore. And one of my favorite sayings is, when's the last time they made a decision for you and I? Yeah. Right. It, they just they, don't anymore. And it, don't. it's even the people that believe in their campaign lies. They don't even do anything for them. Anymore. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's weird. It's I've never lived in a time like this. Well, I think these people, um, it's a <laughs> It's kind of like the uh, 90-10 rule. You know, there's 10%, a a smaller percentage than the rest of us, but they have enormous impact. And and then you have, uh, on another note here, is that these people are so comfortable with what they're doing, maybe because of how our culture is changing and because of social media and the things that are shared out in social media world that they feel more comfortable exposing themselves. And we've gotten to a point to where some, the 90% of us are sitting back and go, whoa, no, this is not okay. And uh, this is the time to maybe we can dial things back because this is not the first time in history. um, This has been going on from the beginning of time, this type of stuff. They, they also have, this isn't even conspiracy anymore. They also control the governments, the money, the three-letter agencies, yes. and the media. Yeah. So when you have control of that circle, you know, and then you have people that actually watch TV and believe what's on there. Right. You know, you. you <laughs> it's sad. I mean, I, like you can't convince somebody who watches the evening news that that's all just a lie. You know, it's, it's very difficult. Yeah, and they know, it's, and they know that, and they control all four parts of that. So, that, yeah. Well, so they've true. got the corner on the education system too. So you start yeah. them out young, you yeah. break up the families, people are not home because they're both having to work now and you've got someone else raising your child in the formative years and boom, yeah. how that's easy right. is that? Um, yeah. But that's why I'm happy to see people fighting back, uh, you know, well, and right. just, yeah. we've desensitized um, the public so much we're you know, all the imagery and the music and the things that they're doing. And I know we said this back in the (laughs) seventies and, you know, but I mean, really uh, it's, you see these things and we watch them in movies and then, you know, to have come and have a story and say, yeah, there's some crazy stuff going on on the yacht. And people are like, Oh, okay. Did you watch this movie? Cause you know, that's that's pretend. So, you know, that's how they get away with it. You know, I do. Uh, yeah. And I think also I wanted to wanted your opinion on, you know, as far as the bankers go, and when you have that kind of money and power, what else, what else can you get? So you start getting into these other crazy weird stuff for control or for a thrill or for whatever. I mean, do you think that could be? I mean, because that what else do they need? They don't need anything else if they have everything already. <laughs> so yeah, there's there's a. I would say this is life experience. This is just kind of figuring things out. Uh, I and it shouldn't say life experience. It is life experience, but it's not learned from being a yacht captain. I a lot of what they do 
is they move money around to control environments and situations. Right. And when they when they're able to do that to the degree that which they are, um, you can get away with almost anything you need to do, right? Mm-hmm. But if you look, that's like this level, right? That's like the politician level. Like the next two or three levels up from that, by the way, there are. Oh yes. And and those levels are um they control people through money. And they control people more importantly through means of blackmail, right. uh me, many different uh ways of controlling people. But they control it because of if they didn't you and I would overpower them and take them, and it, they know that, and it, that the ridiculousness of this entire scheme in which we all think is reality in life is just ridiculous. And um, it, it, as long as you keep everybody in that, I would say this, it, <laughs> yeah, as, as soon as we all realize that money is worthless, yeah, the right. gig is up, and they'll right. and they'll have to come up with a new angle and a new scheme. But when you control from the top, you're able to make wars, you're able to make, you know, the military and industrial complex has run right. this country for so long that it's it's comical when people tell me, oh yeah, well, I'm gonna vote for this politician or that one, you know, and it's, you know, it was I'm old enough to remember what Eisenhower had to say. And and he wasn't kidding. And the man was, you know, a general, right? I mean it was um was he a general? I believe it was a general, yeah. yeah. And so all of the people that have told us that this is all going on, for some reason they don't ever get interviewed again and they don't they're not on the evening news. I wonder why that is. Yeah. But the control is uh never changed. It's never it's it's not any worse or any better than it ever used to be. My point that I like to say is that I have strong evidence in my lifetime that there's a war at the top where they used to be lockstep and otherwise there would be no way they would be doing the things they're doing today and exposing themselves the way they are you there's just they would have you just would have never had three-letter agencies you know going into presidential houses or post president or whoever and, and coming up and throwing that in people's faces if that wasn't some form of retaliation that never right. happened before and yeah. that that leads to exposure us creating knowledge and it being easier much easier for you and i to tell the people who are watching the evening news does that seem real to you uh, and so yeah. That is changing. So you things. mentioned you mentioned like um so we've all heard um I don't know if you you followed like the like the Whitney Webbs um you know of the of the world that they've done some extensive um research in these types of areas. Um and not just her, a lot a lot of others. Um, and they mention like families like the Rothschild family and you know the Rockefellers and you know all these all these high level families that have been around for a really long time. And I mean, even they touch on it when you watch um, like say the men who built America or uh, the history channel will have mm-hmm. things on, on how the, how those families, even back then they made, you know, they were battling each other. And so are, are, do you think then that these families, all the things that we're seeing, um, they're battling each other and causing these weird things to happen or that all this peculiar um, things that are going on right now, like you say, you like, this can't be real. Uh, do no. you think it is real and that they're, they're forcing each other to do these things or, or what? I, to some level, not quite at the top, I wouldn't imagine, but yeah, pretty close to the top. Uh, and the only reason why I say that is because it's it hasn't hit the top yet. And you'll know it hits the top when, when we all just stare, look at each other and go, wait a minute. Who do we owe $34 trillion to? Right. Who are those people? Like, yeah. Why don't we just tell them we're not going to pay that? We're, exactly. not, we're not doing that. Next <laughs> subject. What, we got all the guns. We got all the people. We, we we have the military. Who are these thirteen families, and why have they never been audited? You know, like mm. that. When we go there, 
you'll know that the top is completely disassembling itself. But lower than that, I would say the next level down from that would be these people who are trying to become in those families or influence those families for their own self-preservation for whatever that might be or power in the world. Those people are the dangerous ones because they're still climbing that power ladder. And uh, some of the people that I've worked for are on that ladder. And and, um, they're, like I say, not friendly people, not good people at heart. And um, they, anyway, they're they're very, uh, how do I say, connected, directly connected to the presidential level and and that around the world, for sure. We certainly are. But I want to say something about uh, Whitney Webb, is her name right? Um, Yes. I, I've heard her recently say a few things that I'm totally 100% opposed. I'm like, no, nah, that's, and none of us can get all of it right. But she had a few things just that were like, that isn't even remotely accurate. And I don't know. You can tell when she's really on to something is that she has a lot of facts and she has like, okay, here's what this family's going to do that and this and this and that. But sometimes, in, uh, in particular lately, she's thrown a lot of things out that are just like, she'll just one line it and just say, oh, well, they're doing this to these kids or those people. And it's it's a hot button. And if she doesn't back it up well, I'm like, uh, yeah. Does that have to do with Epstein? The, the latest on uh, the Epstein of Virgin Islands story? N- no, no. That whole thing, unfortunately, is very accurate um yeah. that i know of Sad. but no she came out recently with some really how do i put it uh she threw cardano directly under the bus oh okay yeah and her yeah. position on crypto I, yeah. I don't entirely agree with her on either and she said that cardano is tracking children in africa for nefarious reasons yeah. and i thought okay well, I researched that. I looked into that because that I, that raised my eyebrows also. And I did too. And I have for a long time. And I, I've been following this for a long time. And it's more about their school records right. that have it never is. been accurate. And then they try to come to the U.S. and there's no documentation of anything right. they've ever learned. So, mm-hmm. yeah, she's right. They are tracking these kids. And yes, could it be used for bad? May probably. Probably could be. A lot of this stuff could be used for bad. Christy and I talked about that in a previous show where we say, you know, all this technology, um, Mm -hmm. it it could be a benefit to humanity in a lot of ways. And we have to be careful with it. And not everything that's going on is bad. Yeah. Everything. This whole Cardano thing, though, that's why they chose to, to focus on Africa, because so many of these people are undocumented in terms of their education. So they come over to the States, um, you know, an industrialized country and they're highly trained in their country, but they come Mm -hmm. here for instance, and they're starting all over again. I know somebody from Ethiopia, same way, highly trained person. And the the best that he was able to do coming over here is to do phlebotomy, extremely yeah. trained and he's been doing phlebotomy now for about 27 years because he brought his family he fleed ethiopia mm-hmm. and he's working in the healthcare industry lovely lovely man and family i, I happen to have the pleasure of being uh, I, they were my clients a while uh, many years ago and i learned a lot about them and i was just the things that they escaped from and what they sacrificed to come here and they couldn't have, he couldn't afford to go back to school and he wasn't going to go back to school. Not in our system. No. He'd already been trained. Yeah. Yeah. He's forgotten more about yes. modern than most. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. So but, there's no records know, there. Yeah. No, that's right. And they get held down yes, and they they're do. not allowed to uh, flourish in our economy. And, and that's, you know, intentional or not, that's what's happening right. to them. Unfortunately, yeah. yeah. But many she's, people from around the world. Right. She's really spot on with so many things. And and you know, I know she works really hard in her research. So I'm not trying to throw her into the bus whatsoever right. because she's doing brilliant stuff. 
Um, but you know, there was, there's a couple other things too, that I was like, yeah, she's not right about that family either, but that's inside stuff that I kind of know about, but um, I'm not saying that I've done the research that she has at all because I am not that guy. I, that is not my, uh, you can tell it's her passion. Yeah. And it, I thank God we have people like her that do care to the level that she does. Right. And uh, we're the place, this world's a better place because of people like her in it for sure. Well, and, yeah. and, and I think that um, it's really good though, to also do your own research when yeah. you hear something, um, we don't want to fall into a situation where we're going so far the opposite direction, right? So now we we know we don't trust the mainstream media anymore um, because they've lied so much. And we have to be careful not to latch on to somebody else that, um, you know, the purpose is to sway your opinion one way or another could, could be anyway. And sure. so I think we, we have to always take it, take information uh, with a grain of salt until we find more, more yeah. information to back that up. But Jen, but she definitely is someone that gives us all an incredible head start um, to go and, and look for things for ourselves and, uh, teach ourselves how to be a little bit better about asking questions. I mean, like you, you, you working amongst these folks, um, you've seen things. And so, you know, you're just one man, uh, that, that has seen some things and, you know, who are you? And somebody's like, Oh, what does Alan know? Well, Alan yeah. knows a lot. <laughs> <laughs> because yeah. he's been there. So he knows if somebody is saying something might not be completely accurate. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I've had a unique career. I haven't just, I haven't just worked for the family that invented a toaster. You know, I've, I've worked for families that were um, really politically connected and I worked for families that were, um, three-letter agent connected, mm -hmm. uh, agencies connected. And it's really been unique. And I also had the kind of mind that cared to know about it and was smart enough to uh, be a good listener and not jump in with my two cents, even though I uh, completely opposed what they were saying at the moment uh, so that I could hear more. And right. when you're, and then that paid off in a job that I took just after that job, I took a job and uh, that it paid off because I was talking to a crew member and this man approached me with um, something that truly changed my life. Uh, it, it, it changed my knowledge of how the whole thing works and how who's involved and why they're involved. And uh, it's way too long to go on in, in, on this show, but it paints... Uh, it paints two pictures and I, I, if I could really just go down this road a little bit, there are people that care about you and I and the well-being of this planet. There really are. There, there's a lot of them. And um, there are people who don't care a damn and would like to see this thing go down to 500 you know, million people, as you all know. Right. Those two groups don't agree. <laughs> They don't agree at all. And those shenanigans, we'll call them, that they, they pull is a constant battle and a constant war that is happening around us at all times. Thank God there are people that think like normal average people who do have power and money and they do want a different world and they don't want their kids to grow up in that kind of world. So in that sense, I had more hope after reading all the documents in which I read um wow i had way I shared more documents hope. with you <laughs> yeah yeah That's because incredible. because you all of us can go down this doomsday road of this is bad and these people are bad and our country's corrupt and all countries are corrupt and power only corrupts and it's only evil and it will tear you up it will tear your life apart and too many of us spend too much time in focused upon what we don't want from our lives and right. for our children's lives. And that rubbed off into who you are. And it was so refreshing to me because I was pretty down on the world after working for the other guy. I was, I was like, this is bad. This is rigged. This is so, 
it's evil. And, uh, and then when I met the other man who had uh, not only a, a network, I mean, a massive global network of people that cared that um, it changed who I am. And it, at, at one point, I actually told my son, I said, there's so much I'm not going to tell you about what I read. I'm not going to ever tell you because there's people who aren't, don't feel that way. And there's people that are trying to do everything in their power to make sure that you don't live that life. Right. And I, every time I hear people tell me, oh, we're all done for and they control every aspect of our lives. I always have to say this one thing that is absolutely not the case. And the reason why I know that is because there's a billion of us on this planet and that is not their plan. So if they had control over I'm going to say a greater power, which I know they don't. Okay, um, we would all be done for already. Very that sure. would have occurred. Makes so sense. That's the math of that. So I, I love that math. It's you good know, math. And, and doing <laughs> some research on you that that was one clear message is that you have a, a positive message that we have a brighter future ahead of us because. There are more of us. There are people yes. who do care. And um, if you don't mind, I like to kind of go back to a couple things that you said uh -oh. about the families. It seems to me, um, my maiden name, let's put it this way, came from families of influence. Uh, uh, you might say that they took care of neighborhoods and things like that. Let's just put okay. it that way. Okay, so that's that's that family background. Were and, they German, uh, English, Irish, or Italian? Sicilian. <laughs> what? Sicilian. Okay. Okay. I got you. Yeah. Yeah. So, All right. so the way I see this is what's happening is that you have these families colliding and they're they're at a point right now where they had to have each other to work with and they had an understanding, but then yet at some point in time when mission accomplished and they don't really need that other family so much anymore, they're going to start reaching for more power, maybe take over their areas and they clamor for more and more power and yeah. they make their way up to the top. And of course you have underlings that come up as well because they want to grow in the family and they, and all of these dynamics going on. And yeah. that's just kind of the way it, it seems like to me is what's going on. And, and as you say, Very it might so. be about 15 families or so that that uh, has all of this uh, this power and influence. And that's kind of maybe what's going on. You have some people, some of these families that, like you say, want far less of us on this earth. And then you have the other, uh, other group of families say, no, no. We we can yeah. have good times and we don't need to fleece everybody. Oh, that's um, right. Yeah, yeah. So we can have prosperity. But if you don't mind, with all of your banking um uh interactions, your experience, what brought you into the crypto space? And how how does that how does your um banking relationships, your the people that you know feel mm. about cryptocurrency and Bitcoin in particular. And I want to say, and I want to emphasize on the Bitcoin part of it, because there's this, this, this uh, Air Force major, Major Jason Lowry. Yes. From the Space Force. Haven't quite figured him out. It seems like he's allowed to do an awful lot of talking. And I yeah. think that there's a reason for that, but I just kind of want to leave it there and get your insights and all of that. Well, I mean, how long a show do we have here? Holy smokes. <laughs> uh, but <laughs>